also called as a chileto matrix chileto matrix means uh, matrix means measure chileto means some complex is there so with the help of that complex we are uh, measuring this uh, titration so this is used for the determination of mixture of different metal ions present in solution different metal ions so this is used for measuring metal ions like uh, calcium magnesium zinc so these are the ions which are used this uh, during by using complex or so matrix titration these are basically transition metal ions so in this uh, titrant is a complexing agent and may or may not form a water soluble complex with the titrant so they form water soluble complex may not also form so we'll take case of water soluble complex here titrant uh, is often chelating agent so this is chelating agent which is forming complex with the titrate so uh, one example is EDTA ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid so this is a very useful as uh, chelating agent for titrations so it will react with large number of elements and uh, reactions can be controlled by adjustment of pH. So uh, pH is playing a very important role in uh, reactions of chelating agent with the titrant. And indicators are used to form a highly colored complex with the metal ion. So indicators will form a very good colors at the end point of the titration. So this is an example of GS EDTA. It is also called as a uh, hexadentinant uh, ligand hexadentinant ligand ligands are the those substances which can donate the lone pair so lone pairs means uh, a non bonding electrons so here lone pairs are there natural cards there one lone pair one lone pairs here uh, in this uh, carboxylic acid carboxylic acid so here lone pairs are present over there so there will be uh, six ligands are there which can donate the lone pair and it will combine with the titrant uh, it will combine with the titrate so one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. So these oxygen lone pairs so here, lone pairs are present over there. Here lone pairs are present. Two lone pair. Here also lone pair. So this will attack through the lone pair. So six lone pairs are there. Four carboxy group, two amino group, two amino groups are there. That's why this is called as tetra basic acid also. So normally we write in the in the form of H4X. Also when sodium attached with this one, so we write Na2H2S disodium salts. Okay, so like this is the formula. So one more formula I have written like uh, so ETA. Uh, it can be any species of ETA, ETA. So it can be any species. It can combine with any metal or any uh, other uh, substances. So the basic formula is this one. So number of uh, Na4 minus X HX Y. So X is equal to number of acidic protons. So X, it can be uh, equal to four or less than 4 so this is depends on the ATS we are not going to discuss all these things so this is complexing uh, this complex agent is mixed with the uh, react with the titrate to form a complex an indicator we are using here uh, to identify this metal so ideochrome uh, one indicator is ideochrome uh, black tea it is organic chelating agent so at the end point uh, it will react so this is used for the magnesium uh, to identify the magnesium metals ions so general formula for the complex agent is this is the metals it is complex agent combined it will form a complex and acid is given out so this is the basically formula so let us take some examples so we have copper sulfate here ion is metal in this case complex agent is ammonium hydroxide it is not EDA it combined with in this form it makes a complex this is soluble in water second is uh, silver nitrate here casein is acting as a complex agent or ligands so they will attack with the silver nitrate and the form a complex which also soluble in water so this is again identified with the help of eochrome not in from any uh, indicators okay so complexes are these complexes are uh, stoichiometry that is a one is to one ratio of cation and edta present in the complex if you are using edta then it will be should be one is to one ratio here it's not edta this is ammonium hydroxide as is potassium cyanide the stability of complex is affected by the ph we have discussed at different ph the stability is also different if the complex is dipositive ions so they are stable in ammonic solutions but in acidic medium they will decompose so we will take the medium should be ammonical or the basic if it, uh, metal is type positive it is stable in acidic medium so these are some properties nearly all EDTA metal ion complex are soluble in water color of the metal EDTA complex depends upon the nature of metal ion and EDTA they are sufficiently soluble but destroyed by the powerful oxidizing agent like 
हॉट के आर ओ फोर टू नेगेटिव और सीजियम सेरियम थ्री प्लस सॉल्यूशन सो दी आर एस ऑफ विच कैन डिस्ट्राई द ई टी एस सॉल्यूशन सो वी शुड एवॉइड यूजिंग ऑल दिस पावरफुल ऑक्सीजन ड्यूरिंग द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ द स्टेबल आयन और इट सी प्रॉब्लम्स हाउ क्वेश्चन कैन बी आस्ट इन कॉम्प्लेक्सोमेटिक टाइटेशन ए सैम्पल ऑफ ड्राई एंड प्योर कैल्शियम कार्बोनेट वेइंग वन पॉइंट थ्री टू फाइव ग्राम इज डिजॉल्व इन टू हंड्रेड फिफ्टी एम एल वॉल्यूमेट्रिक फ्लास्क ट्वेंटी फाइव एम एल ऑफ दिस सॉल्यूशन सो आफ्टर मेकिंग दिस कंसेंट्रेशन यू हैव टू टेक ट्वेंटी फाइव एम एल ऑफ दिस सॉल्यूशन एंड टाइटेटेड विद द ई टी एम सेम रिएक्शन सो इट विल फॉर्म ए कॉम्प्लेक्स सॉल्यूशन एंड हुज सॉल्यूशन इज टू ट्वेंटी सिक्स पॉइंट फोर सेवन एम एल वेरी यूज इट इज यूज फॉर द Twenty five ml, twenty five ml of this one is treated with the twenty six point four six solution of EGTA sodium salt. Calculate the normality of EGTA solutions and mass of the EGTA salt dissolved in its five hundred ml water. So here we have to measure in five hundred ml water. If we know one liter, we can find out half uh, half liter of solution also. So it is very clear. So this is a milliequent of calcium carbonate is reacting with the EGTA complex. So, milliequent of calcium carbonate in 25 ml. So, we have we have taken 25 uh, this ml solution. Milliequent of EGTA solution. So, here N1 uh, of calcium carbonate, few calcium carbonate. Normality of EGTA. Uh, volume of EGTA. So, it is given here. Weight given here. Uh, we will we know that calcium carbonate, and they have 250 ml is also given here. But we are taking 25 ml. 25 ml we are taking. We don't we don't know EGTA. But we know we know the volume for the is a volume of EAT that is twenty six point four seven. So we'll get the normality of EAT. So this point non point one normality in one liter solution. But we have to find in five hundred ml. So five for five hundred ml it will be your point one into five hundred it will be. Now we have to find the mass of the EAT salt. So five hundred ml this is your fifty milliequivalent. Now this fifty milliequivalent is equal to weight by EAT. Divided by equivalent by EGTA, so it will give you a uh, thousand. So uh, EGTA is m by two, so it's the disodium three hundred divided by two. So we will get here weight of EGTA fifty thousand, and uh, weight of the EGTA is the diamine uh, tetrastic acid. This one one eighty six. So we will get here ten point three grams. So this is our answer. So now let us move to another topic that is called precipitation titrations. So in precipitation titrations, in this Titan and titan, both are cations and ions, so they will react with each other, okay, to form the precipitate. So one is cation, one is anion, so they will form precipitate. And now this precipitate has low solubility and separate out. So after forming precipitate, it will separate out, and this uh, uh, during separation, uh, the end point is determined by using suitable indicators or potentiometrically, that is called sensors. So it is useful uh, for determining certain analytes. Uh, for example, uh, Cl can be determined when uh, titrated with silver nitrate solutions. Let us see here, silver nitrate titrate, and here NaCl. So one is cation, and one is there. So they will react each other. Silver will react with the uh, chloride. It will form a precipitate. So at the end of uh, so end point is determined by the using uh, suitable indicator. How much uh, Cl is present over there? Not how much uh, we will identify the reaction has been complete by using uh, indicators. So this is sometimes called as argentometric titrations. This for this reactions. So there is one more reaction is called uh, barium chloride. It will react with the H2SO4. So barium sulfate is formed. It is white precipitate. Precipitate is there. But most of the reactions we are using with the silver nitrate only. So to calculate the how much concentration Cl is present um, in the Precipitate. So we have two methods. That is called Mohr methods, and second is called uh, Wohl-Hartz method. So from two methods, we can determine the concentration of Cl and I. So here indicators used is absorption indicators. So these indicators reaction uh, take place uh, on the surface of the precipitate. So uh, this precipitate here uh, indicator reaction will take place on the surface of the absorption indicators. The indicator is diacetic solution as in ionized form, usually an anion. So indicators have also anion. Uh, so color of the adsorbed indicator is different from that of the un 
adjust so indicator so this color different so on the surface it will be different so this difference signals the completion of the titration when there will be a difference of colors uh, previous the color of the adsorption indicators and after the uh, end point the color of the adsorption indicators will uh, show the neutralization reaction or end point of the titration or completion of the titration to determine uh, to determine, determine the cl ion when titrated with the silver nitrate solutions one mohr method i discussed so here soluble chromate salt is added as an indicator so this produces the yellow color solutions when the precipitation of the chloride is complete the silver with and the first excess of silver react with the indicator to precipitate the silver chromate the silver will react with the chromate okay it's indicators so in the ph 7 to 10 this is uh, high is just a basic medium so here this will undergo precipitates and uh, in this way uh, we'll see the, uh, the uh, when the whole silver will react with the yellow uh, chromate uh, then the we'll see this is the end point of the reaction and it is useful for determining the uh, chlorine in a neutral or unbuffered solution such as drinking water so uh, we are not going to discuss this thing more thing in detail only we have to limit the theoretical point of view. Uh, next is the volar titration. So in this volar titration, this is also indirect titration of this one to determine the uh, concentration of anion that uh, precipitate with the silver, like Cl, Br, iodine, thiocyanate. So anything we can take, let, we'll take here for Cl only. Cl for understanding. So it is preferred in dilute nitric, so, uh, dilute nitric solutions. So in presence of iron uh, ferric salt as indicators. So here silver uh, plus Cl, this will react each other, silver nitrate plus NaCl, it will give you silver chloride as a precipitate and this silver is excess. This excess react with the nitric, uh, nitric acid and potassium thiocyanate. So on this, uh, this will be fully convert into silver cyanate and if remaining left, if remaining left, that is thiocyanate, this will again titrate with the ferric, so uh, ferric ammonium sulfate. So on reaction, this one, uh, reaction has been complete, this is called, uh, we will get the soluble red complex, when this is also finished, this is also finished, then we say reaction has been completed. So uh, we are not going to uh, understand too much these things. So this is the method to uh, determine the CL of the ions to finishing, uh, to complete this uh, silver nitrate in this case and previous also case where silver is reacted with the chromate. Now let us see the uh, numerical. How this numerical is being asked in the examination so an alloy of silver contains 87 percent of silver so any alloy silver is containing 87 percent and one gram of this alloy was dissolved in concentrated hno3 and silver ions were precipitated as a silver cyanide by adding 38 ml of potassium cyanide so calculate the thiocyanide silver thiocyanide so calculate the normality of potassium thiocyanide so during the estimation of silver, uh, following uh, reaction sequence occurs. So silver will in presence of HNO3, I uh, discussed earlier. Uh, it will convert to silver nitrate and in presence of potassium thiocyanate, it will convert to silver thiocyanate. So this means a uh, milliequivalent of silver will be equal to milliequivalent of silver nitrate and this will milliequivalent to potassium thiocyanate. Now we need to find out the normality of potassium thiocyanate. Okay. So here again silver is given as we will take this two value, this and this value. So many kind of silver is nothing but the, uh, this is the uh, uh, weight by uh, equivalent of sodium, the equivalent of silver into 1000. And uh, normality of KCN is we have to find out and volume is given here, 38 ml this side. So we can solve it. So on solving, we'll get here 1 by uh, 108. This is the weight of the silver. 100 is the equivalent mass and 87%. So we have to take the 87% of silver. So 87% of this much equivalent weight into 1000. So we'll get here normality of potassium thiocyanate is 0.1 normal. So this is our answer. Uh, we'll take one more numericals based on uh, this uh, precipitation titration. So what mass of substance containing 60% of NaCl and 37% of potassium chloride should be weighed out uh, for analysis uh, so that after the reaction, 25 ml of 0.1 normal a silver nitrate solutions and excess of silver plus is back titrated with 5 ml of ammonium thiocyanate solutions. And given that 1 ml of uh, ammonium thiocyanate is equal to 1.1 ml of silver nitrate solutions. So here mixture give this mixtures uh, 
we have given x percent of some uh, substances okay and uh, some silver substances or some substances in which uh, nacl present how much 60 percent in case it present 37 percent and it is reacted with the silver nitrate so again this is back tattered with the ammonium cyanate with the so that the, all the silver nitrate will be subsequently neutralized so this is excess condition so how much silver nitrate is reacted with the mixture so we can write here silver nitrate total silver nitrate is this much milliequivalent of silver nitrate minus milliequivalent of ammonium cyanate will be equal to milliequivalent of silver nitrate used in the mixture so for this one they have given here 25 ml into 0.1 normality this is total milliequivalent minus milliequivalent of ammonium cyanate so for 1 ml 1.1 is there so for 5 ml we require 5 into 0.1 0.11 so this is given here so if you multiply it so it will come here uh, points point 55 okay so on solving so here you just change this modification this will be your uh, 0.11 ml so here it will be your 0.11 ml so 25 into 0.1 ml minus 5 into 0.11 ml because 1 ml is this much for 5 ml we require this much so 25 into 0.1 this will be 2.5 5 into 0.11 this is 0.55 so we will get answer 1.95 milliequivalent of silver nitrate used for the mixture is equal to this much because they are uh, reacting with the KCl and sodium chloride okay so here uh, so this is equal to uh, 1.95 mixtures okay so again So here mass of the sample uses x gram so this is again we have seen here so this whole sample is how much this is your x gram is given here this is not this x gram is given here so again uh, weight of the KCl will be how much so it is 37 percent so 37 percent means 37 by 100 into x total x KCl and weight of the NSL is 60 percent of x that is 0.6 x gram so now we can put this value which is equal to 1.95 so for KCL 0.37 by equivalent of uh, KCL is 74.5 into x uh, into 1000 uh, plus equivalent of uh, milliequivalent of uh, sodium chloride will be 0.66 by 58.5 into 1000 so total will be 1.95 gram so here we can solve what is the mass of the substance that mass of substance is x equal to 0 0.128 gram this is the mass of the sample used in this mixture so here x percent is there so here we can calculate this answer so this is basically our answer